military has been protecting Americans for hundreds of years, and it's developed a lot of secrets in its time. Here are 50 surprising facts about the US military. Number 50. Older than you know. The country's first business after being founded would probably be to create a military, right? Well, in the United States they didn't have to, since they already had one. About 13 months before the United States declared independence, the Second Continental Congress passed a resolution creating a United Continental Army. It would be led by George Washington, and that army was trained in preparation for increasingly likely hostilities with the British Crown. So at least in this country, the US Army is older than the United States, and it's grown a lot since then. Number 49. Bigger than you know. The military is run today by the US Department of Defense, and it's laid its claim to a large swath of land. It controls federal land in the US, land it leases abroad, and land the US government has claimed as territory in past military engagements. Altogether, that comes to around 30 million acres of land worldwide. Not only is that larger than the state of Pennsylvania, but if all combined it would be larger than all but 99 countries. And it's a path to success. Number 48. Honored Men You'd think that most people who would become US presidents probably grew up in the elites, and they might be less likely to serve. But actually, around two-thirds of the men who became US presidents were US military veterans, starting with the very first George Washington. The most decorated was probably Theodore Roosevelt, who even received the Medal of Honor. Ulysses S. Grant and Dwight D. Eisenhower were probably the most renowned generals in the Civil War and World War II. But we're in a dry spell right now. Of the last five presidents, only one served in the military, and George W. Bush only served stateside in the Air National Guard, and it came from humble beginnings. Number 47. No, not gorillas. During the first days of the military, the US Army didn't have much to work with. They were ill-equipped, only had a short time to train, and were facing one of the world's largest empires. But they had one advantage. They were on their home turf, and they knew how to use it. General Francis Marion took full advantage of the swampy terrain and used it for the surprise attacks against unsuspecting British patrols. The US soldiers would emerge from the swamp, attack, and just as quickly retreat, rather than engaging a tactic that would become the blueprint for modern guerrilla warfare. But today, it's spread pretty thin. Number 46. All over the place. There are 195 recognized countries in the world, and the US military is present in over two-thirds of them. The US military's 3 million current employees, 450,000 of those, are soldiers deployed to foreign countries. But the US isn't involved in any current war since we withdrew from Afghanistan. So what exactly are we doing there? It's complicated. While in some countries the US is engaged in active operations against terror groups, in others they've been invited as peacekeepers or to maintain a presence as a deterrent. The US also has permanent military bases on the soil of many other allies that coordinate with other militaries. But what happens when the US is considering leaving? Number 45. Cash Cow For many years, budget-conscious politicians and activists in the US wondered why does the US still have military bases in places like Europe? After all, that's not exactly a military flashpoint anymore. Ok, that take aged pretty poorly. But people still wondered if bases in places like Germany were worth the investment. Well, if you ask the Germans, they were. When word got out that the US was considering closing bases in some locations, the locals were strongly opposed. The local economy was heavily based around the presence of United States soldiers, and they didn't want to face a budget crunch. And the US military has had a lot of mouths to feed. Number 44. Top of the heap. The top employer in the United States, it's not ExxonMobil, the largest energy company, which has just under a million employees, it's not even Walmart. The mega-sized shopping chain, which has 1.3 million, it's the United States Department of Defense, which in addition to all the active duty and reserve soldiers, maintains enough civilian personnel to have a whopping total staff of 3 million people. And unlike many businesses, it's going to be around as long as the US is, so that's a lot of job security, and it keeps on growing. Number 43. Recruits Welcome Each year, the military takes in around 79,000 new recruits. The US Army alone has more people in it than major cities like San Francisco, and it's only one of the five branches, with the smaller Coast Guard, Navy, Air Force, and Marines joining in. Today, all five branches of the military are volunteer only, with recruits getting details on their pay rate and all the potential benefits they'll get after they complete their term. Many people's first exposure to the military is at recruitment fairs, where they often make it sound like an awesome adventure. But it wasn't always this way. Number 42. Anyone feel a draft? For the US military's first 80 years, it was also mostly an all-volunteer force, and it was capable of winning both the American Revolution and the British revenge strike in the War of 1812. But then came the Civil War, 
and the US was split in two, as the Confederacy took a lot of the military's manpower with it. Soon, both armies were instituting the US's first military draft, requiring people to sign up under penalty of law. It didn't go over well. Many people were angry about how some were able to buy their way out of the draft, and it led to bloody riots in New York City. But it worked, and the draft would be brought back for the two world wars, Korea and Vietnam. But it wasn't the only time young men had to check the mail nervously. Number 41. A draft, just in case. The first peacetime draft was created in 1940, but was it really peacetime? Everyone knew that World War II would likely make its way over to the United States eventually, and Pearl Harbor proved them right. But the second peacetime draft was more controversial. Passed in 1948, it wasn't as widespread, but it deployed countless young men around the world just in case they were needed when hostilities with the Soviet Union broke out. There was no formal declaration of war, but many men drafted under the law wound up in Korea or Vietnam, and there was no allowance for celebrities. If your number came up, you had to serve, even if you were Elvis. Number 40. The King in Fatigues When the King was drafted in 1958, there was no war going on, something his millions of fans were no doubt happy about. He insisted he didn't want to be treated any differently than the average soldier, despite the mob of fans waiting for him as he arrived at boot camp. He served as a private, did his duty quietly, and chose not to apply for a transfer to special services where he could have given concerts as part of his service. His label was prepared. They had stockpiled musical material before his induction, and his fans would barely notice he was in the army now. But one group wasn't allowed in the army until recently. Number 39. Women's Day Women have been aiding the military since the beginning, but often in limited roles or with many roadblocks in their way. A disguised woman, Deborah Sampson, even became a decorated Revolutionary War veteran. But women weren't allowed to join the military until 1948. Before that, many served unofficially as spies, nurses, or support staff, but weren't eligible for honors despite being in as much danger as the armed soldiers. Since then, though, the laws have changed and now women are eligible to serve in all combat roles. There is, however, one exception. Number 38. Selective indeed. The draft has been off the table since the 1970s and the military does not want it back. However, all males between 18 and 25 are still required to register for selective service, which means if a draft is needed, it can be snapped into action and people can be pulled into the military in only days. However, it doesn't include women, despite them being eligible for all combat roles and serving the same way as men. Should this change, some say it's only fair and others are telling the military to get their hands off their daughters. But not all the recruits are human either. Number 37. Good boy. There are 2,700 recruits in the US military who don't follow regular rules. They don't sleep in the barracks, they chase birds in their off time, and they might even greet a commanding officer by licking them. And they're not going to be ordered to do any push-ups because they're military working dogs. In a similar way to police dogs, these elite canine soldiers are specialized in detecting narcotics and explosive devices. They can also patrol for enemies and chase off threats. And not just any good boy can do this job. It takes 16 hours of training every month plus tests every three months to become a military working dog. And then there's the surprising heavy-duty soldiers. Number 36. Robo Troops US military robots have been around since the 1960s when the US created the Beetle. This massive robot was designed to be used for handling nuclear materials. They never actually saw use, but smaller robots became an essential part of military life. Today, high-tech robots are used for all sorts of missions, including carrying victims to safety and disarming explosives and flying drones have become an effective way to eliminate targets without putting troops in harm's way. And unlike other soldiers, these robo-troops don't need rest and food, just an occasional recharge. But it takes a lot of energy to keep the military going. Number 35. Gas, gas, gas. Every time you head to the gas pump, it's hard not to cringe. But if you think filling up a gas tank of a car is bad, imagine the cost of trying to keep a tank or a fighter jet refueled. During World War II, it took around a gallon of fuel each day to support a single soldier, but that was with a lot of foot patrol and collective transports. Today, with high-powered vehicles shuttling soldiers and powerful weapons around the battlefield, it takes around 22 gallons of fuel per day just to support one soldier, and those costs are only going up. And all that fuel adds up. Number 34. Fuel Follies Today, the US Army alone burns through about a billion gallons of fuel each year, and that's without a major war going on. In a combat situation, those numbers go up massively and fuel is a limited resource, the Department of Defense is increasingly worried about both fuel costs and the impact to the environment, so they're looking into increasing the use of alternative energy sources. Not only could this be more efficient, but it would protect the US from an oil embargo from enemy nations. But it's been a long time since the US was truly at war. Number 33. What is it good for? When was the last time the US went to war? 
You might be thinking Iraq, Afghanistan, or even Vietnam. But the actual answer is against Japan and Nazi Germany when they formally declared war on the Axis powers. Since then, every military action the US has been involved in was not accompanied by a formal declaration of war. Some were classified as police actions, others as limited military operations. While most were authorized by Congress, in none of them did Congress vote on a formal declaration of war. But that could change based on something half a world away. Number 32. The NATO Factor Ever since the post-war founding of the North American Treaty Organization, many countries of Europe and North America have been aligned. The most significant part of the treaty is Article 5, which is a mutual defense pact. If one country in the treaty is attacked by a hostile power, it means all the other countries will consider it an attack against them as well. That means that if a small nation like Belgium is attacked, it would have nuclear powers like the United States, Great Britain, and France coming to its defense. No wonder many countries in Eastern Europe want to join the alliance. But what happens if it's NATO versus NATO? Number 31. Family Feud Say a soccer match between Belgium and the Netherlands gets out of control and the next thing you know, soldiers from both sides are aiming guns at each other. There are actually no official bylaws on how to govern an attack by one NATO member against another, because the treaty is supposed to prevent exactly that. However, most legal experts believe that NATO would be obligated to assist the country that was attacked. Of course, it's common for parties to disagree on who started the war, even if one fired first. So, there's a good chance that NATO might wind up splitting down the middle on who to support, with the US having to choose a side. And they would have to be careful to avoid sending in soldiers that they might not want to. Number 30. The Youngest Soldier You usually have to be 18 to join the US military, but that didn't stop countless teenagers from signing up with false documents during the World Wars. But no one topped John Lincoln Clem for jumping the gun. The nine-year-old boy wanted to join the Union Army during the Civil War and after being rejected once, managed to make it in. He was so small that his superiors in the 22nd Michigan Volunteer Infantry even sawed down his musket so he could carry it. He was a sergeant by age 12 and went on to serve in the military for most of his life, retiring as a major general. But in terms of dedication, no one tops this guy. Number 29. The Oldest Soldier To find the oldest active duty member the US military ever had, you've got to head over to the Coast Guard. When Anthony Christie was laid to rest in 1862, the 105-year-old man had a unique distinction. He was still on active duty. How is this possible? He served as a lighthouse keeper, a job that generally didn't involve heavy exertion. As long as his eyes were sharp enough to do his job, the Coast Guard had no reason to retire him. So, he kept the lighthouse running almost 40 years past retirement age. And with a lot of people in the military, it means that they need a pretty big headquarters. Number 28. Welcome to HQ The Department of Defense runs the US military and used to run all the branches. And they're all running out of one building, the Pentagon. It's easy to underestimate since it's relatively flat, but the Pentagon is one of the largest office buildings in the world, with three times the office space of massive skyscrapers like the Empire State Building, holding the brains of the US military and many of its highest ranking officials. It's also heavily fortified. When the Pentagon was targeted by one of the planes on September 11, 2001, it sustained heavy damage, but the damage was much less widespread than it could have been in another Washington building. So wait, what's that one exception? Number 27. Coastal Changes Why doesn't the Coast Guard operate out of the Department of Defense? It was until post-9-11 laws handed it over to the newly created Department of Homeland Security. Due to the Coast Guard's larger domestic responsibilities, it was uncoupled from the other branch's foreign duties. However, a clause was put into the bill so that if the Coast Guard is needed in an active war, the US Navy can take control of all its assets. And no matter how high someone in the military ranks, they always answer to one person. Number 26. The Commander The Commander-in-Chief is the highest ranking position in the military and they have final say over almost all areas of military policy, up to and including deploying nuclear weapons. And they can outrank the highest generals without ever serving a day in the military. All they have to do is win an election, because the President of the United States doubles as the Commander-in-Chief, and they're the only ones who can begin a military engagement or end it which might get tense when a president who never served is giving the orders. But there's one other rank that's impossible to reach. Number 25. That Fifth Star The rank of five-star general was created in 1944 to represent soldiers given special promotions above the typical four-star rank. Over the years, only ten officers were ever granted five-star status, four in the Navy, five in the Army, and one in the Air Force. However, there won't be any others. When General Omar Bradley, the last surviving five-star officer, passed away, the military decided to retire the ranks. But there's one person above all of them in rank. Number 24. The General of the Armies 
The year was 1976 and the bicentennial was the perfect time to honor those who made America possible. There was one man who did more than any other, George Washington. He had been dead for 177 years, but the decision was made to promote him to the title of General of the Armies, a position only held once before by World War I legend John J. Pershing. As part of the promotion, Washington was granted permanent seniority over all U.S. generals and admirals, ensuring that the Father of the United States is its highest-ranking official forever. And for decorated veterans, there's usually one end of the road. Number 23. The Final Honor Arlington National Cemetery holds the remains of close to half a million U.S. veterans from multiple wars, and generals who pass away are frequently given a place of honor there. Only two U.S. presidents have been buried at Arlington, John F. Kennedy, who served with distinction in World War II and was seriously injured in combat, and William Howard Taft. Taft never actually served in the military, but by being a Secretary of War and Commander-in-Chief, he was able to get his plot of land. But not everyone buried at Arlington has a traditional tombstone. Number 22. The Unknown War is messy, and it's not always possible to get everyone home for a proper burial, especially today with high-yield bombs. It's possible for remains to be burned too badly to be identified. That's where the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier comes in, a memorial to soldiers who have been buried at Arlington but never identified. There are tombs for World War I, World War II, and the Korean War. One was created for Vietnam, but it's currently empty, after DNA evidence allowed the government to identify Lt. Joseph Blasi and give him a proper burial in 1998. And those tombs are attended to by a unique unit. Number 21. The First Unit They call them the Old Guard for a reason. They've been on active duty since 1784. But the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment isn't just any unit of soldiers. They're a ceremonial unit, serving as escorts to the U.S. Commander-in-Chief. But they also have one other key duty, the regular changing of the guard ceremony at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. But while they're primarily a ceremonial unit, they have been deployed in combat, and four members of the unit have been awarded the Medal of Honor, most recently in Vietnam. And the military's ranks have always been diverse. Number 20. A Unit of Immigrants when the U.S. military saw many of its forces join the Confederates in the Civil War, they were bailed out by an unlikely source, immigrants, along with a large number of free African Americans who wanted to fight the slaveholding South. The Union Army was one-third composed of immigrants, and in a quarter of all regiments, the majority of soldiers were not born in the United States. That pattern continues, and today around 5% of U.S. forces are either naturalized immigrants or non-citizens. Now let's get into some truly strange facts. Number 19. Looking Cool you know those smooth Ray-Ban glasses you love to wear? They didn't come from fashion, but from necessity. When Air Force pilots were struggling to keep their vision straight due to the rays of the sun in the cockpit, Army Air Corps Lieutenant General John McCready contacted glass manufacturer Bausch & Lomb to help make glasses with better anti-sun properties. Soon, the first Ray-Bans were available. Pilots were flying without that persistent nausea and headaches, and were looking good while doing it. It's surprising just how many companies work with the military. Number 18. Crack open a cold one. Who doesn't love a nice cold Coca-Cola? A little taste of home that can be a psychological lifesaver for a struggling soldier. And the company wanted to make sure that it was possible in World War II. Company President Robert Woodruff decreed that any World War II soldier around the world should be able to get a bottle of Coke for a nickel. That led to the creation of the Technical Observer position, which oversaw the management of these wartime plants. Not only did they help distribute 5 billion bottles of Coke around the world, but they had an Army officer's salary and rank. This one's just a little awkward. Number 17. A Bad Symbol The 45th Infantry was a proud unit that served in multiple U.S. wars and was unique due to it being made up of a majority of Native Americans. That led them to work indigenous iconography into their sleeve insignias, and they were proudly wearing those pins into battle. At least they did until World War II, because one of those traditional Native symbols was the swastika, and after Hitler and the Nazis co-opted it, it was quickly dropped and replaced with a Thunderbird. In combat, every little detail matters. Number 16. Smooth Snap Velcro is a convenient tool, an easy way to fasten clothes and items without having to stop to tie things. There's just one problem, that annoying ripping sound that alerts anyone in the immediate area, aka the bane of any teenager sneaking out of the house. Of course, in a combat situation, the consequences of waking up the wrong person might be far more dire. That's why the military developed a silent version of Velcro that reduced that annoying sound almost to nothing. Unfortunately for all those sneaky teenagers, it's still top secret. The military is particular about how they're portrayed as well. Number 15. Hollywood Military You know all those times the military swoops in to save the day? Be it a modern war movie or a ridiculous action movie where the army fights off aliens, they all have one thing in common. If a movie wants to portray the military, they usually work with the Department of Defense's entertainment unit. 
Many producers want to borrow military equipment or film on military bases for accuracy, and in those cases the Department of Defense gets script approval. Of course, they're not too picky. Some of the movies the DoD approved included Batman and Robin and The Last Action Hero. But one movie might have had a bigger impact than any other. Number 14. The Top Gun When Tom Cruise's military adventure Top Gun was released in 1986, Navy recruiters started hanging out around movie theaters. The men who saw the movie suddenly thought being a pilot was the coolest thing in the world, and some even decided that they would like to sign up on the spot. According to official Navy reports, the position of naval aviator saw a 500% jump in applications in the aftermath, and the brass is no doubt excited for the sequel to finally come out. The US military is always prepared, in more ways than one. Number 13. A Useful Tool US military members who do air missions are given a parachute pack survival kit in case they get shot down and need to survive on their own. It includes some useful tools like wire, knives, matches, and fire starters, as well as a large non-lubricated condom. No, the military isn't making sure that soldiers are able to practice safe sex while trying to survive in the jungle. Condoms are stretchy, as anyone who's put one over their entire hand knows, so it can double up as a water canteen that holds up to a liter of rainwater if needed. The military even has a department of… trash talk? Number 12. Them's fighting words In Afghanistan, the US faced a challenge of a motivated and ruthless Taliban opposition that knew the terrain far better than them. It was time to call up the Psychological Warfare Department to develop some new tactics, and what they came up with was loudspeakers that goaded enemy fighters into picking fights they couldn't win by calling them names. Apparently such inventive nicknames like Cowardly Dogs and Lady Men were enough, even if the tactic might have been borrowed from the elementary school playground. And the military takes care of their own. Number 11. Wounded Warriors Many soldiers come back from combat with serious injuries, some missing limbs or other disabilities. And once they complete their rehabilitation, there's a new challenge waiting for them, the Warrior Games. This Olympic-like competition pits representatives from the various branches of the military against each other for bragging rights, with every competitor being a combat-wounded veteran. And since the Games began in 2010, the Marines have dominated. And there are some truly odd positions in the military. Number 10. Devil's Advocate When the military debates new policies, it's easy to fall into groupthink. Not only is there a lot of money at stake, but there's always a high-ranking member in the room and it's easy to defer to him. But if no one's willing to say no, costly mistakes can happen, which is why some graduates at Fort Leavenworth are trained with the art of being skeptical. These red teamers are unafraid to play devil's advocate in heated debates and can save the team from the bane of consensus. And some things are older than you think. Number 9. Down Under the submarine is one of the military's most useful tools, able to take command of the seas and deliver powerful and clinical strikes from underwater. It saw the most use in the world wars, but actually goes back far earlier than that. The Turtle, an early example of a submersible weapon, was deployed during the Revolutionary War to sink a British ship off New York, and failed miserably. But it was an effective test of future weaponry. But for all the US military's efforts, they can leave a big footprint. Number 8. Eviction Notice the island of Diego Garcia, a British possession, had a population of over a thousand people living happily in the Indian Ocean paradise, until the US military came calling. They wanted to build a military base there. They needed total security, and so the entire island's population needed to go. The British government agreed, and soon the entire population was being sent to the island of Mauritius, which took them after a hefty payment. And the US military's experiments even hit the homeland. Number 7. Spray Test in the 1950s and 60s, residents of cities including San Francisco, St. Louis, and areas of Minnesota, South Carolina, and Georgia saw something alarming. Motorized blowers spraying odd, colorful substances all over the city it looked almost like a chemical attack, and the zinc cadmium sulfide wasn't a weapon, but it was related. The fluorescent substance was sprayed because the military wanted to see how chemical or biological weapons could spread by the wind, and there's no better way than actually spraying a close substitute. But other places got it far worse. Number 6. In the Depths In the aftermath of World War II, there was an enormous amount of spare hardware to dispose of. Much of it was dangerous and couldn't simply be scrapped, so the government came up with another solution. Just dump it in the ocean. Much of this started after the First World War and continued until 1970. A wide range of military hardware was dumped, such as 64 million pounds of nerve gas and other chemical weapons, plus hundreds of thousands of bombs, rockets, and landmines, and they're still down there. But no one really knows exactly what's lurking where, and sometimes the military just gets it wrong. Number 5. Firing at Nothing The Great Los Angeles Air Raid of 1942 was one of the biggest military operations in the homeland in a long time. It was World War II, and the military was on high alert for an attack on US soil. 
So when reports came in of an enemy aircraft, the military responded with overwhelming force. They fired 1,400 anti-aircraft weapons and countless rounds at the mystery object until it was brought down and found that it was a lost weather balloon. Hey, better safe than sorry. But sometimes the military gets pretty innovative. Number 4. Game Time When the military needed a new supercomputer in 2010, they came up with many plans, but few of them were cost-effective. The solution that did pass muster? They collected 1,700 PlayStation 3 consoles, removed and combined much of the hardware, and wound up with an amalgam processing core that had all the power and memory they needed, at a fraction of the cost and carbon footprint. And some of their ideas sounded a little like science fiction. Number 3. Mad Science DARPA, or the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, is where the military's wildest ideas become a reality. One of those ideas? A computer chip that can be implanted directly into the brains of soldiers. This will allow them to connect remotely to computers without a device, which would allow vital intelligence to be put into their minds directly from headquarters. But not all of DARPA's ideas are that out there. Number 2. Master of Invention DARPA has been responsible for some of the military's wildest and longest-lasting inventions, but they've also given the general public a lot. Two of their biggest contributions? The Internet, which was heavily funded by the US government along with private tech companies, and the GPS systems that help get you where you're going in your car. Both are used by the government today, but most people can't live without them. But this one last fact about the US military might shock you. Number 1. Boom The US has only used nuclear bombs twice in combat and they're currently the only country to do so, but they've used many more nuclear bombs than that. To develop their nuclear arsenal, they've conducted over a thousand nuclear tests over the decades, more than half the number conducted around the world. 800 of those tests have been underground nuclear tests, while 200 have been atmospheric and created a signature mushroom cloud everyone fears. But for now, that's all they are, tests. Want to know how the US military stacks up against the competition? Check out Most Powerful Military in 2022 ranked, or watch this video instead.